Well, the doctrine of total depravity, or what we call radical corruption, which Augustine expressed in terms of our moral inability, uh, is important for us to understand that we may understand grace and that we may understand the gospel. In my church, for example, every Sunday we, I, I read one of the Ten Commandments and then use the Heidelberg Catechism's exposition of that particular commandment, and we study the law of God because the law reveals to us not only the righteousness of God and his holiness, but by contrast, it stands as a mirror. I look in the mirror of God's law, and I realize my utter helplessness in and of myself. As long as I compare myself up to other people, as the Apostle Paul said, those who judge themselves by themselves and among themselves are not wise, I begin to get a, uh, a, a kind of uh, uh, inflated view of my own righteousness. And then Calvin said, we, looking our, on the earth, keep our gaze here. We begin to address ourselves as only less than God's until we turn our gaze to God himself. And in the light of the ultimate norm of perfection, the perfect holiness of God, I'm exposed. I'm like Isaiah. I realize I'm a man of unclean lips, and I disintegrate. And I understand that my sin is not just something that's on the edges of my life. You go out into the culture, and, and everybody out there says, well, nobody's perfect, so what's the big deal? They think it's so common to have sin, but there's, there are few people who really understand the gravity of it, the degree of it. And when we look at the biblical doctrine of sin and the biblical doctrine of my corruption, and I understand what it is teaching me, then I know the only way I can ever be saved is through somebody else's righteousness. As long as I entertain the idea that there's some island of righteousness inside my soul that can avail to my salvation, I don't really need the gospel.